Hello, my name is Robert. This is Goozy Fabrication. Hit that like, subscribe, leave some comments. This is what we're doing today. We're going to be finishing up our C4 Corvette rear axle assembly installation into our Resto Mod 55 GMC truck. Yeah, this is going to be a really great video. Let's get into it. Okay, first off, for the front of the four link, we're going to be making a mounting plate. And we've got this out of poster board. And that's so we can get our correct position and height. And we're going to be using 3 8 plate to build this out of. Yeah, no twisting or flexing there. And so now I'm transferring over onto the 3 8 plate from the poster board. And we want to be really accurate with our holes. So we're going to be using a center punch. Don't want any mishaps or misalignments with the brackets. Okay, so if the cutting, if it's straight, I like to use a 7-inch cutoff wheel. If it's not, if it's curved, well, then a plasma cutter. And we're finishing out the plates. And we're also going to be boxing the frame on this vehicle. Okay, so we've got our plate done. Now we're going to be uh, drilling our holes. And you remember we used the center punch so we can get some uh, accurate placement. And we're doubling those up so we can uh, get a really nice job on both of them at one time. So let's see what we've done. And the holes are lining up. Okay, so on to the placement, on to the frame. And we're going to be using these transfer punches to go through the plate onto the frame. Again, keeping in mind with the accuracy of the, uh, of the holes. We want everything to line up really nicely. I don't like drilling holes and then having to... Uh, waller them out or anything like that so we're using a smaller bit to start with and then we're going to be stepping up to the 5 8 that's the bolt size we're going to be using for these hardware Everything's lining up really nicely, and I'm going to be welding nuts to the back side of this before we box this uh, frame. And so we've tightened everything up, and to avoid spatter sticking to the threads, here's a tip for you. Put some uh, uh, nozzle dip on those threads. That way, if any welding spatter gets onto it, it's not going to stick to the threads and mess up our day. And as always, we want to keep everything nice and protected, cover things up whenever you're welding or painting or grinding, grinding especially, that will wipe stuff out. So here we go. We don't need to weld all the way around the nut. And you want to start with good, graded, solid hardware. You don't want to run down to Harbor Freight or Home Depot, get those low-grade nuts. If you weld stuff like that, put a bolt in it it's going to stretch the threads it's going to be a bad day so we're just going to start out with good quality hardware we don't need to weld all the way around it one on each side and really nice weld is all we need now i've i'm responsible for a couple of these holes i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie or anything like that but there were a lot of holes already in this frame rail so what we want to do if we want to do a really nice job come back and weld those up I've got a solid brass backing puck that I'm using on the inside of the frame rail and now I'm just doing a plug weld 
And welding tip, if you want to be a really nice or good welder, have really good wells, fit up and prep. Okay, so I'm finishing this thing off with a flap disc. This is a four and a half inch flap disc with 36 grit. That's going to make really quick work. And you can see the fit up and the prep allowed me to do some really nice welding. Minimum uh, grinding. Now I'm going to finish out and, and uh, feather in this whole area with 36 grit on an 8 inch orbital. And there you can see the finish out. Fit up and prep. Then you can be a good welder. Okay, so we're going to be coating the inside of the frame rail because we're getting ready to start our boxing procedure. And now I've mixed up some encapsulator to coat this entire inside. We don't want to leave any bare steel so that it can rust. Now you can use anything you want in an encapsulator. You can use epoxy. You can uh, use primer. That's your discretion. This is what I'm doing. Okay, so we are going to use a little bit of primer on the outside. This frame is going to be completely disassembled and shipped off to the powder coater. But just to be, just for best practice, we don't want to leave any bare steel, start surface rest. It just doesn't look professional. Okay, that's a shot of the inside before boxing. Everything's dried. Everything's protected. Now I'm using some poster board and we are going to be fashioning the template for the boxing plate. We want to be really accurate because our boxing plate is only going to be as good as our template. Take a little bit of time. If you got to wad that one up because it's not right, throw it away, start over. Okay, a final few adjustments here. And boom, now this frame, we're, you notice we're tying it into this front webbing. And this frame is not uh, straight up and down, so we, we have some adjustments to make. Transferring the template onto the steel plate for boxing. There it is. Okay, so like I mentioned, if it's straight, cutoff wheel. If it's not, plasma cutter. The difference is, well, we've got to do a little more cleanup if we use a plasma cutter. Yeah, with the uh, cutoff wheel, very little cleanup. Okay, prepping the frame rails. We want to get all the paint off. Uh, before we start welding. Now I've already coated the inside of this plate even though you don't see it. And let's see what type of work we've done here. Getting it fitted into place. Okay, we want to start tack welding. We're not just going to take off because we're going to tack weld this and then we're going to get the frame rails, everything lined up, everything squeezed down where it's flush. We want to do a really nice job. And hey, if you take a little bit of extra time, there's the difference between a great job and an okay job usually is not, the distance usually isn't that far or the time investment. There's our fit up. And you'll notice that little ledge, that's going to give us a really nice landing so that we can put a really nice weld in there. So let's get with it. Now we can take off. Everything's done, right, prepped, fitted. And we have plenty of weld there because of the setup on the landing to shape that frame rail. Now we're not going to go super in depth in this frame rail because 
that would just be the customer where it's not a show truck the customer just rec uh, asked for it to be installed correctly and uh, not a lot of time finished out but let me show you what we're going to do there's our weld Going back to the four and a half inch uh, 36 grit flap disc, we want to keep that thing nice and flush. We just want to barely knock off the top of that weld. Then go to the top side, knock the top off of it. We don't want to put gouges or dig troughs into the metal. You'll see that after you paint or powder coat. Now with those done, we can come back and just round that off. Now we're finishing off with the 36 grit, eight inch orbital. That's what we have. That's what the customer wanted. He's, he's already seen this. He's very happy with the finish out of everything. Did pretty nice on our transitions and again we want to keep up that professional appearance anyway until we are professionals and uh do the same things always shot a little bit of primer on there now it's assembly time our nuts are welded from the back side our frame is boxed this piece can be removable so when we uh, powder coat the frame we can powder coat the mounts in a separate color to give a little added detail instead of just welding it now everything's one color okay so we're moving on to the links mounting the four links and we are using these little spacers to index that we want them to be in line in a good alignment nothing binding nothing willy wonky and the best way that i found to get the correct measurements for a four link or a ladder bar type whatever you're working with get similar type size od tubing well this is a pvc pipe and now you can get a very accurate measurement and luckily there's a supply store racing supply store nearby We've got our four links or our links. Now we can throw them into our heim joint and get this thing assembled. Now you'll notice on the uh, rear axle uh, bat wing mount that it, it's not the right size, but we can use spacers to take up that and get that into alignment. Yeah, the alignment is critical. A little bit of forethought in this area goes a long way. Now, this kit came with some completely different components. Flat out engineering, not a uh, not a fan, but I'm happy now. Okay, let's get our shock mount or our uh, coilover shocks in place, and we're gonna get this thing buttoned up. And you can see the rest of the installation on other videos, on previous videos. This is our finish out. Everything is right and in alignment. It's going to be a really nice addition to this truck. Again, this is a Resto Mod 55 GMC. We're doing an LS uh, swap on this truck. Yeah, we're going all out. Spotlight, visor, LS swap, Corvette front and rear suspension. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be a really sweet truck. I'd like to say thank you to all our followers, subscribers. Leave some comments. And as always, thank you for watching.